Hello everyone and welcome to Chanel's Reality. I'm Chanel and this is my reality. <laughs> so listen, I have a few bones to pick with a few different housewives and I just want to come on here and talk about it. Okay, one second. Mm. Okay, listen, sidebar. This ice cream is ruining my life. I just found out about it like, I feel like maybe November. I don't know. How did I get this damn ice cream? Oh, I probably went to H-E-B. Or maybe it was a Target. I don't know. I went somewhere. And I got this ice cream. It's called Jerry's or Jenny's. Hold on. It's called Jenny's. I didn't even know this ice cream exists. Why? Because we got Bluebell ice cream here in Texas. It's like, Bluebell ice cream is the best in the country. No, it's not. Sorry. Y'all do make really good pralines and cream ice cream. I'll give them that much. But this one that I'm eating is, um, it's like blueberry lemon. It's so good. Hmm. You can see. Okay, back to what I was saying. Because I'm going to be here for a good time, not a long time. I just want to come on here and talk to all the, um, um, Candace haters. First of all, shout out to Candace. Diller Bassett. Candace, can you come on Chanel's reality? I would be so happy you would make my dream come true. You're probably not gonna see this, but either way, I got your back, girl. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I want to come on here and talk because I want people to decide which lane they're gonna be in. That's so good. The reason I say that is because since Candace came on the show, I don't know who watched Potomac from the beginning, but if you didn't watch it from, you know, season one, it's, it'll probably be a little more, there'll be a, a few gaps of why maybe Candace reacts the way she does. Do I think it's healthy? I don't. But I do think that these these girls these ladies they they continuously bring a butter knife to this fight with candace and it's just not a fair fight because she's smarter than them no shade no shade she's just witty she's quick like giselle can hate on you or hate you or read you or whatever you want to call it in her confessional she's not gonna be able to read you on site She's not going to be able to. Candace is going to read you on site. Um, Karen Huger is going to read you on site. Wendy, Dr. Wendy Osefo. Dr. Wendy, if you listen, can you come on my show, please? Um, you know, I don't like begging, but I just figured I could just ask through the YouTube. Um, have some mercy on my soul. Anyways, um, yeah, Dr. Wendy will dead you on site, and that's why... For those of you that don't watch Potomac, that's why the well, it's the it's the beginning of why there's no communication from Giselle to Wendy or Candace. And you know it's the saddest part. And I'm gonna get back to what I was saying before, but the sad the worst part is first of all, y'all are a group of grown women acting like seventh graders because that's what we did in the seventh grade, right? We don't like her or, well, I didn't do that because I'm like this. Listen, God made me, my creator made me an original. So why would I be a copy? Catch it. So I was always, listen, I was always, you know, you know how people, you'll hear people say stuff like, you know, stop begging to sit at someone else's table or you, or they just want to get a seat at the table. Listen, I'm going to create my own table and decide if you can come sit here. Okay. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, these girls can't read. Karen can read you from head to toe. But this is the thing. This is my dilemma. So for all of the people who come and visit Chanel's Reality, I appreciate you. Please hit that like button and subscribe button. If this is your first time, welcome. Like I said, hit the like button and subscribe so that I can grow my channel. Um, 
and we can do that together. I, I, I love, love, love talking to people about housewives and, you know, some pop culture. I don't want to talk about all of it, but, um, but some of it. Um, but anyways, so thank you guys for being here. But I came on here because I need all of the Candace haters or the people who have decided, you know, for whatever reason, she rubs them the wrong way, whatever that is. And I get it. Candace can rub people the wrong way. But here's my thing. I feel like Candace is always responding to the bull. Like, if you guys remember her first season, she was so... And Candace, if you ever see this, you looked so young. And you're gorgeous. But you looked... I was just like... I, was, I rewatched. I was like, she legit looked 19. Like, what is happening? Um, but she was so fresh-eyed. Her and Monique hit it off from jump. Like, they were meshed really really well um i hate that that friendship died and i hate that they got both got played by giselle both of them it's so sad i don't and monique if you ever get see this video or if y'all want to forward it to her i have one question do you regret what happened between you and um candace do would you do it over differently my other question is I never understood, because I liked you from the jump, but I never understood. I feel like this is maybe your third or fourth season when, you know, you no longer came back or whatever the case may be, that you, for whatever reason, listened to anything that Giselle said. She told y'all when y'all were, I guess, in the south of France, wherever it was, when you, you brought her up to your room trying to be nice to her and kind of hash it out. Y'all had breakfast and, you know, she listened to you. Pretend, listen, because she don't care. Um, and she said to you directly, you shot at me and you missed. If I'm going to shoot at you, I'm going to sit back and wait. And then I'm going to the right moment to blow your face off. That's what Giselle said. I'm paraphrasing. I believe her because <laughs> she did exactly that. She played y'all, and I hate to say it that way because I know people have egos or whatever, but she did. That, to me, I feel like you should have been questioning, why is Giselle over here telling me about whatever it is Candace is doing that may be behind my back or whatever the case may be? And it's the same thing that happened with Candace and Robin. The same exact thing. Because Giselle has power over people. It's just bizarre. But the person that has the most power, and I cannot figure it out, I swear to God, I still can't figure it out, is Ashley. How is Ashley, how does Ashley go through every, okay, every season, she says some foul-ish about somebody. And she makes up lies. She calls it putting sauce. It's not, it's not sauce, Ashley. It's lies that you tell about other people. So, anyway, back to the Giselle not Giselle, back to the people who hate Candace, can't see it for Candace. I literally was on a live yesterday. And it was just like the entire panel. Maybe, I think there was at least one lady on there. Everybody else hated, they hated, they hated Candace. I hate Candace. That's what she gets and all this, that, and the third, right? This is the thing that I can't understand. Because people are like, oh my God, I'm so happy she's leaving. Thank God. Da -da 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 -da. How do I know these people are haters? Like I said, all of the people that don't like Candace, please come on. I can have a um, objective conversation. I can, truly. Um, but I would really like to understand how is it that the live was really about a lot of things, but literally they got stuck on, on um, Candace. And for three hours plus, they had a conversation about how they can't stand her. It was it was like a drag session, but it was just so sad to watch. It was so hard to watch because I'm like, are these people really that? I hate calling people the D word or the S word, but unaware. I, I can't understand. I, there are plenty of people that I don't like for various reasons, but I am not so preoccupied with why I don't like those people that I cannot be objective. I'm not. 
it's kind of similar in my opinion it's kind of similar to and it's not the same but it's kind of similar to kim kardashian and my people and i'm just gonna speak for myself and some of the people that i've met over the years and it's like so many people they just oh i can't stand her she's what do they call it culture appropriating our braids or the biggest one to me that i i just i can't get past is oh we uh She's helping black men or black women, actually, I think, or no, both get them off of death row, get them a stay of execution, get them um, a chance to get out of prison. And it's like, I, I, I don't understand it. I don't under, And that's why I say it's a true, you're a true hater. You're finding fault in a lady that helped a few people get out of jail that were in jail for like frivolous reasons oh she had some drugs she was a mule and you gonna put her in jail for the rest of her life come on but people there is a subset of people who hate her so much they can't even look at the good that she's doing they can't they're gonna always because let me tell you what they'll say if i say because i was actually on a panel a few months back and they and they were like are you um it was on the gray hair diva. Love diva. Hey diva. Um, I was on her panel. And um, I don't know what it was that, that uh, Kim had done. But we were going around the panel. And then when she got. Because everybody. No I'm not saying thank you. And the, even the way that diva set up the question. She was like. Would you like to tell um, Kim Kardashian thank you. I'm like yes. I sure would. <laughs> because again. I feel like we live in a world that is becoming more and more. I feel like we live in a society that finding fault is a disease. Like, I feel like our country and people that are in it, we constantly look for the the, the, the thing that's bad with this person to, to, to just hone in on. And then we don't care any good that they do. Because why are you mad at her? Why are you mad at Kim Kardashian exactly? Brown people? The lady is not brown and she's out here trying to get other brown people and she's not brown. Out of jail. But people have found a way to still not like her. I just I can't. <laughs> I can compartmentalize. Be clear. I can compartmentalize. I don't have to like anything that you're saying. But I'm not going to go out of my way to just be a bitch to you because I can. Again, hate her. So back to what I was saying about Candace. If you love the Green Eyed Bandits or Giselle is your girl or whoever it is you like, Ashley, chime down in the comments and give me, if you can, an intellectual response as to why you don't like Candace. Because I feel like it would be a hard, I, I don't know a person that could say, but prove me wrong, they don't like Candace, but they're also not Team Giselle or Robin or Ashley. Because I want to know what it is outside of the those people and their opinion of her. Why do you dislike her? But like I said, I was on the panel um, yesterday and these people were just, like I said, it was a drag session and it was driving me crazy. So I was like, please, please drop the link. Okay. Because I didn't listen to them for like a good hour. A good hour. And it was just like so disappointing because how do y'all sit up? I'm just like, pick a lane. How do you sit there and for however many seasons Candace has been on there, you've hated her from day one. You rooted for her to get beat up. You were happy that she did. You terrorized her on the internet. You know, all these awful things. And I'm not saying everybody, but there's a lot of people that I watch Twitter and I'm just like, do these people have a life? And don't get me wrong, there's plenty of people I can't stand on Housewives. But I'm not making it my life's goal or, you know, daily thing that I'm going to do. Which is, let me go see how much I can spew hate to this lady. Be objective. That's all I want. I just want objective uh, comments. And and you can completely disagree. I don't, I'm not here, you know, to have people be drones and just agree with me. I would love for someone to, you know, chime down in the comments and say, listen, I get it. But I still rock with Giselle or whatever. I want to know, logically, why that is. Because I just feel like, you know, birds of a feather. It's like if you cool with... 
if you cool with the person that you know is stealing, what does that say about you? Integrity involves, and basically it is, doing the right thing even when no one is watching. That's integrity. I'm going to stand up for what's right even though it goes against whatever. But I'm not going to get off on that tangent. I want to know, because like I said, I was on the live and I couldn't understand this. So I was just like, I, I just, I need to get on this live. So finally I got on the live and you know, cause they were having all these double standards, right? So one of the double standards was the first double standard was there. I don't see no colorism and people don't want to just argue with these people. So there ain't no colorism going on. I can't, but we'll get back to that. Um, so, you know, and then one of the things that they said when we were discussing colorism, and, and to me, it wasn't a discussion. It was, you know, those people that, just for example, they love Donald Trump. Just for an example. I'm not trying to get in a fight with anybody about Donald Trump. Um, but it's, it's, it's those people who know what he did was wrong. They know it. But they love this this guy. And it, and it makes no sense whatsoever. I'm just kind of like, what is the logical reasoning? Do y'all not see all of that? Because this is what they say. You know, Candace did this and did that and this, that, and the third. Is Candace perfect? No. But I do believe if you go watch from season one, she came on season three. But if you go watch from season one, the colorism thing started with Giselle and, and, and uh, Robin. They chased Katie around the whole Potomac for that first season talking about, you're going to tell your kids they're Jewish? I just don't understand. If her, kid, if her ch children are half white or whatever it is, and they're Jewish, why can't she say that? Why do people like to say, if you're biracial, you need to pick a lane? We're all citizens of the earth, so just shut the hell up. Because people don't, people don't realize, I think. Race is a is a is a man made construct, right? It's it's made all race is race is put into play so that America can categorize people. That's all it is because race doesn't have anything to do with humanity. It doesn't have anything to do with someone's ability to achieve or you know be a good person. It has nothing to do with that. Race is a construct. It is based on features right so i have fuller lips you have skinnier eyes this lady has a big nose this lady over here has a big forehead tall short whatever that's what race is about that's all race is because technically there isn't a race but if you're gonna say this is what we're we're gonna categorize people according to their race like i said features then we can kind of we can sit up on our horse and be like oh well her nose is too big or, oh she's overweight or whatever it is right so they don't like candace and the, the point they were making about the colorism situation whenever candace and wendy i think we're talking about the colorism part and um Someone brought up how, you know, Chris is, you know, because Chris is mad at Giselle and we all know why. If you haven't, if you don't know why, go watch last season and you'll see why. You'll also see why if you go to the season before last season, you'll see why Giselle hates Wendy and, and Candace. And it's the irony for me. So it's like the backwards thinking. You hate, you hate Candace and you refuse to talk to Candace, but you sat on this TV show and told millions of people a lie. And now you have the nerve to be mad at her. What in the hell is wrong, child? This is that's why I said backwards log logic. It makes no sense. It's not logical. And same thing with Wendy. You're gonna tell this lady she got and went and got her body done and breast implants and all this because she, supposedly she has a, a, a side baby. Her husband has a side baby and he, you know, follows big booty models or whatever the case may be. I just would like to know who knows a man. They don't watch porn. You know any? All men do is think about sex. So, if if you and your husband or boyfriend watch porn, I just would like to know why it's so egregious that Mr. Osefo follows booty models. 
Because at the end of the day, he's coming home to his wife. They seem like they have a really solid marriage. But people like to pick, right? So the conversation, like I said, that they were bringing up was at last year's reunion when Chris came out, you know, to try to clear his name because Giselle, the Cookie Monster people, Sesame Street people, Ashley, Robin, and I feel like there's one, Mia, all had like this little plot and plan to like take down Chris and uh, uh, Candace's uh, husband. So they're having the conversation and the people on the panel that I was on with, they're like, oh, you know, this that, and the third about Chris. And we were talking about colorism. Now, this is the part where I come in because they're saying, and I'm paraphrasing, there's no way that Giselle can win against da 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 da, da because he's a white man. There is no way she's going to win. She don't, she can't win, right? So I'm trying to understand. And I asked them this. So, let's just use your logic. Let's apply it to Candace and Wendy. So, what you're saying is, Giselle doesn't have a fighting chance to win anything with this man because of his white privilege, because he's white, whatever it is, because he's man, he's, he's male. There's no way. All these people are confident. There ain't no way Giselle can go up. She, won't, she will never win. She'll never win because Chris is white. Okay. Because the line keeps moving. Okay. The line continuously is moving. So my rebuttal to that is, so you guys just said, we can't blame the, everything on colorism and everything is in colorism and blah, blah, blah. Okay. But we will say confidently that if Giselle wanted to battle Chris in whatever the battle would be, she could never win because she's black, because she's brown and he's white. So he, she's never going to win. So when I got on the panel, I was like, okay, so maybe that's true. I think to some degree it is true because white men in this country were the only people listening. It wasn't nobody else there writing the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, but white males. Okay, so they, they set up the rules for themselves. But anyways, so I get it, their, their point, but their point is misplaced and wrong. And the reason why is you on one hand sitting over here, this is not... This is not colorism, and Candace this, that, and the third, and Wendy this, that, and the third. Giselle cannot win against the white man, Chris, um, what's his last name? Bassett. So I said, let's use your same logic for Wendy and Candace. Y'all sat on, on here. For about an hour talking about how Candace and Wendy said colorism was going on, but then they wouldn't say who's colorist and da 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 da, right? Which sidebar, they're employees of Bravo. Bravo has that responsibility, not Candace and not Wendy. So y'all need to just hush up with that because that is the most ignorant thing I cannot. You're going to blame the people who are being mistreated for not saying publicly in front of their boss. That this person is mistreating them. Because then you put your boss in a situation. Now he got to figure some shit out. And then you got to worry about retaliation. These are the reasons why we have an HR. Supposedly, you're supposed to be going and having a confidential you know, conversation with someone who's supposed to be unbiased. And who is supposed to be objective. And get, do an investigation. That's what that's for. Bravo's no different. Why should I get on the show and sit up here and tell these people all of the times that they've been benefiting from colorism so let's be clear in my mind i don't think robin karen uh, any of the light-skinned people i do not believe that they are colorist i don't i do believe that they understand that they benefit from their lighter skin do they leave with that? Maybe not. But they understand that there's a privilege assigned to, to them because of their skin color. It is just a fact. So again, y'all can say definitively, there is no way that Giselle can battle and win against Chris Bassett. There's no way, because he's a white male. But then we're going to tell Candace and Wendy you could definitely win against us. How, y'all? Proximity to whiteness. 
why is it that Giselle is an impossibility for Giselle to win against the white man? Okay, it's, it's zero possibility. But you're saying to the dark skinned girls, there's a possibility that you could win against the green eye bandits or the lighter skinned people. How? You just told us this whole white man, there is no possible way Giselle can win against him. It's impossible. Why? Because he's white. So if, again, if that's your logic, okay. Giselle is just a few shades darker than him. She's much lighter than Candace and me and Wendy. But you're saying it's it's not impossible for her, for us to be able to, you know, win against her. Oh, yeah, you can. Why is it impossible for Giselle to win against Chris? You're, you're saying you do not believe because of the society that we live in that it would be a fair fight. If Giselle did have a problem, whatever, with Chris, because he's a white male and she is a black woman. That is what you guys are saying. So then again, if that's if that's the case, if we're saying because he's a because of his skin color, he's automatically at an at a advantage. He automatically has an advantage against her and his gender. Right. But Giselle doesn't automatically have or Robin or Ashley or Mia or Karen, they don't automatically have this privilege that you say Chris Bassett has. How? If you're saying that man's skin color and his gender is the reason why Giselle won't ever be able to win against him, then why can't Wendy and Candace say the same thing about y'all? Oh, it ain't got... Well, why is it then? Why are you offended? You're offended because you don't want to change your behavior. Period. It's why people would get... It's, it's, it's why when Martin Luther King or whoever, you know, would come down and meet and be on TV shows and, you know, have interviews and stuff like that. These people that did not want him, did not want anybody to, that was brown to rise, they would always try to catch this man in some sort of, you know, they he's speaking truth to power. And their response is, he's an agitator. You don't want to hear the truth. Same thing in Potomac. Wendy and Candace are agitators because they won't fall in line and kiss the ring. Be clear. Be clear. We know we live in a racist world, right? So I asked them, I was like, First of all, I told him, I was like, um, colorism is a component of racism. Racism, like I said, is rooted in, and it's a man, it's a man-made construct based on your features, like I said before, right? So you have, um, you know, your skin is lighter than mine since we live in a world that's racist. And you can get certain privileges the lighter you are, the closer you are, the furthest you are away from people that are darker like me. Your chances of how people perceive you are vastly different than maybe how people will receive me. And I think I've made this analogy before because on, on uh, Beverly Hills, you have Dorit talking about, oh, I'm Jewish and I'm, you know, because she... Garcelle called her Karen. Like I said, sometimes it's just, un it's, it's, people are unaware. They're not conscious, right? So this is the thing. Do I think Dorit is racist? Nope, I don't. Do I think Dorit, for whatever reason, has a hard on for Garcelle? Yes. I don't know what it is. She can't stand Garcelle. You know, so she comes to that lunch, she's just like, Garcelle. I'm Jewish and da, da 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 And shout out to the Jewish people. Love y'all too. But I'm trying to understand if we take your Jewishness away, right? And you walk into no Wendy not Wendy, uh, yeah. We'll use we'll use Garcelle. Garcelle walks into the Saks Fifth Avenue. And the people in there don't know her as Garcelle. She's just a shopper. Okay. Let me give you a breakdown of how she would be perceived. And I'm not speaking in absolutes. 
I know there's always an exception to the rule. But from my perspective, this is what would happen. Garcelle walks in. And the people that see her, they automatically assume certain things. And 99% of them are, are negative. Right? So if I, if, if, Gar if um, Garcelle walks in or even I walk in into the Saks Fifth Avenue, the things that people will think in their brain are this. She's black. Okay, so she's probably uneducated or undereducated. She's probably not married. She probably has three baby daddies. She probably knows a brother or a cousin, a friend that's in prison. She probably smokes weed or pops pills. She probably, you know, isn't married. She's probably lazy. And the biggest one, she doesn't have much money. So why would I give her any time of day? Dorita, on the other hand, can walk into that same Saks Fifth Avenue. And like I said, I'm not speaking in absolutes. I'm just giving you what it is from my brown person perspective of I've experienced probably every type of ism okay i live in texas and not everybody in texas is racist i'm not saying that and everything isn't about race but i'm gonna call a thing a thing and so let's be clear mr Reed. when you walk in that door no one knows you're jewish garcelle walks in the door everybody knows she's black everybody okay no one knows but the perception is going to be completely different so i'm going to run it down for you so remember all those things I said about how people will see Gar Garcelle. And like I said, not everybody. But society has conditioned, has this toxic conditioning that we do so that we can categorize people. That's where race came from. We need to be able to categorize these people. The have, the have nots, the pretty people from the ugly people, the weak people from the strong, on and on and on, right? Dorit walks into the store, who's white. I'd be willing to bet what people think in their mind about Dorit is the complete opposite. And they're going to have a whole bunch of positive things to say, in my opinion. So Dorit walks in. She doesn't say anything. You don't know where she's from. But just people are just watching her, right? People will automatically assume Dorit is educated. Dorit grew up in a two-family home. Her children are all from that same man, PK. She's not broke. She's intelligent. She probably has a college degree or two. She's probably married. When you look at a person like that and you hold them in some esteem and you think that they are, I would say above it, but you're gonna, you automatically give them this good assessment of who you think they are. And who you think they're not. It's just a fact. Right? So, you know, I was on there. I was like, I don't understand how. Because I asked everybody, so do you guys think that racism exists? Yeah. Okay. So colorism is the component of racism. Remember I told you it's about your features. It started way back on plantation. And I'm not even going to go through all that. But I'll say this. The people who were closer fairer skinned in you know when, when when our countrymen enslaved a whole bunch of Africans right so the ones that probably got raped oh I can't use that word art they probably had babies you know they came look came out looking like Rihanna or Chris Brown caramel whatever it is right so those people can work in the house not that they're going to be treated any better but they're not in the field It's because of their proximity to whiteness that they are able to do that. And that is what um, Wendy and Candace have been saying. I can do, I can be hostile and I can be aggressive and I'm going to be called hostile and aggressive. Robin done done a, a whole bunch of, she's she's had a whole bunch of aggressive, aggressive situations since she's been on the show. I don't hear them talking about um, how aggressive Robin is. 
Our view. Again, her proximity to whiteness. I will say this, though. Ashley did say, and I'm paraphrasing, but she was just like, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, Karen. I mean, not Karen, Candace. She says, I understand. I know that because I'm fair skinned, I'm going to be treated differently. That's what, she, that's what Ashley said. So who's lying? Because people want to drag Wendy and, and Candace into the next year. They want to take them by the eyelashes and drag them into next year. Because they don't, because colorism can't exist. And I don't understand, like I asked them, I said, so colorism can exist in the general population, but it's void in this population of people? How is that? And the thing that kills me about the people that are, that, that are like, I don't want to talk about colorism, I'm sick of talking about it and whatever else. I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell those white people. Shout out to all the white people, I love y'all too. But the racist ones or the ones that are bigoted or whatever it is. I, I, you know what? I can understand that you keep saying, I don't want to talk about race. Everything isn't about race. I just want to get on the, uh, I just want to watch my mindless entertainment and, you know, whatever. Which is fine. I understand that. I don't, everything isn't about race. I don't want to talk about race. I'm sick of talking about it. Are you? Come to the front. We sick of living it. Okay. So please stop saying that bullshit because it's so stupid and you sound stupid. No shade. I'm just telling you what it is. I'm just giving, keeping it a book. And it sounds even more ir ignorant for the people who want to just put Candace and Wendy in charge of ending colorism on Potomac. Be clear. There was a whole article in Essence Magazine because clearly they see what we see. What are you talking about? But it's, it's no, no, it can't be. Are you fucking kidding me? It's absolutely there. Again, I think the reason that Wendy and Candace answered the question the way they answered it, that, well, there's a multitude of reasons, so don't get me started. But one of the reasons, I would say one of the reasons is y'all sitting up here talking about, okay, well, we, we asked the ladies, we gave them a, you know, if they want to have someone here, a professional here, that's what they said. And then they said, well, you know, the ladies decided we didn't need that. Which ladies? Because be be clear, Candace and Wendy are outnumbered from the jump. Their vote would have never counted anyway. If we're going with what the majority says. So it's not a fair fight. And then you have Bravo being colorist, continuing the colorist behavior. You do. Explain to me why this season they've shown every negative thing that Dr. Wendy said or did every negative thing that Candace has done. I didn't hear them talking about how Robin went and put a whole story of her husband allegedly cheating on her with some lady from Canada. I didn't see them continuously pay that lie. Why aren't we still talking about that? Why aren't we talking about how they went on their, Giselle and Robin went on their podcast or whatever it is and said, you know, well, we believe that this, that Chris Bassett has this um, mistress. <laughs> Robin had the nerve to say, I believe it. I've seen enough. I believe it. And then the girl that was making up all these lies, of course, then recanted and said she was lying. Have these apologized? But Candace is savage. You over here telling the public that you you have some proof or whatever the case may be. Or you've been shown that Candace's husband is cheating on her with some other lady. Bravo, why y'all not continuously playing that? Hmm? About them getting on their podcast to malign their their. their Co-workers. The irony, though, is this. Remember when they were in, I forget, I think it was in Miami. And Robin brought that speaker out to the table so that she could let everybody know that Candace is talking about everybody. 
right? So Robin's allowed to do that. Right? But Candace can't get on her whatever on social media and do whatever she wants. Y'all were so close, but yet she sat that radio thing down so that she could try to basically turn the whole table against you. What what's the other reason? If y'all are so close, that lady's not your friend, Candace. Friends do not do that. She wanted to make a point that you're not trustworthy and that you're shady and whatever else. But I haven't heard her make a point about how shady Giselle is or Ashley. Robin, where's your speaker, sis? <laughs> what did you do with it? Where's your speaker? You think it's so shady that she said this on her podcast or Instagram or whatever it was. But it's not shady for you to go on your paywall, behind your paywall, you and Giselle, and make false accusations about her. She can't say these bitches, none of these bitches are loyal. I mean, Chris Brown, didn't he say these hoes ain't loyal? She don't have the right to say that out loud if that's how she feels. She does. She does. And you have every right to rebuttal her. But since y'all don't fight fair, y'all like to bully people. And it's never just one person to one person. When y'all want to drag people, when you want to humiliate them, you know, all that. It's not. It's not a fair fight and they know it. But I just think it's very ironic that y'all held Candace to this high standard of, oh my God, is she talking about us and how dare she? Meanwhile, y'all go right behind that paywall. And go get an interview or whatever it is from this lady over here that supposedly had an abortion or whatever because she was sleeping with Chris Candace's husband. That's okay. It's okay to go do that though, right? Bravo. Why y'all didn't show that? Multiple times. How they were lying on this lady and her husband. Why are we not painting them into that same you're a liar category? See what I'm getting at? People can do something very similar, but way more egregious. We're not going to continue to say, we're not going to continue to show that. Why? Because our favorites are involved and they're guilty. So we can't do that. We have to minimize that. And we have to raise up the temperature about all of the comments or decisions that Dr. Wendy has made and Candace has made. We're going to flash back every single time they do something shady. Every single time. We're going to not only flash back, but then... We're going to, you know, either talk about it or, or share it again about, like, this is what's going on with these people. Bravo wants this division. They do. Because what other reason do you have to continuously, intentionally try to get the audience to see your perspective, which is Robin and, and, and Karen and Ashley and Giselle, listen... They're the cream of the crop. We got to make sure that narrative stays, you know, front and center. It's just so crazy to me. So y'all all sitting at this table talking about how fake Karen is. I mean, uh, how fake Candace is and whatever else. How fake are y'all? Tell me, tell me this. Is it not fake and also very uh, pernicious? It's just beyond words. So Candace can say y'all bitches ain't loyal or none of these bitches are loyal. And that's the end of the world. But then y'all can get on y'all podcast and have a liar on there telling you that, you know, she slept with this lady's husband. It's just, like she said, the target or the whatever, it keeps moving. How was it okay, Bravo, for these people for a second time? go behind a paywall and not give y'all y'all's due. But how is it okay just morally to just put that out there? Robin at the reunion. Anything that we do, anything as Housewives needs to be on film. That's why I needed to try to embarrass you in front of everyone. 
Robin, I know that Karen said, you're the dizziest bitch sitting at the table. I remember that. I was like, ooh. And she gets you together every single time. Every single time. And you forgive her. And she says way worse shit. Way worse. She's forgiven. Same thing with, same thing with, uh, uh, what's her name? Giselle. Giselle, come to the front. Karen Huger said that you have a hot box. You have an STD. That you had a mental breakdown and had to go to Sing Sing. So she can say you're mentally ill and that you have an STD. And somehow we're going to forgive you. Y'all forgive each other and y'all move on. Did you forget? Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Candice, I mean, uh, Karen, did you forget? These ladies have been saying since the beginning of time, your husband's cheating on you or you, you're cheating on your husband. That's what they've been saying since day one. And you and Giselle are friends? How? And then Ashley, she's the slipperiest one of them all. Listen, Ashley is just like, she be doing all kinds. Of, listen, Ashley has, she, just like Dr. Heavenly, she understands the assignment. The assignment is, I'm going to be, well, see, this is the difference. Though. I was going to say Dr. Heavenly is the same, but she's not really the same and and it's they have the same mindset of what they do to it's just evil but the difference is ashley is a wolf in sheep's clothing she's a trojan horse she comes in she infiltrates she has this light and bright you know bubbly personality or whatever the case may be So people just, they just forgive. But Wendy, I, this is the craziest thing to me. And I'm going to say this, Emily, but I don't understand. So Giselle is mad at Wendy because Giselle decided to come on TV and say that there's a chance that Wendy changed her body. Because her husband has a side baby reportedly in this blog and... He has booty models that he's looking at. You need us to do that on film? So we can put it on the season? And then you're wondering why people keep saying you're trying people's marriage. So Wendy responded, people don't like Wendy now. Why? Because she stood up to Giselle. Not saying that she never did, but I'm saying they want to have a reason to say that Wendy is whatever it is that they don't like. So they're going to find fault in every single thing she does. So, I need to apologize to you for you coming on TV and lying on my husband and me. Candace, too. Y'all lied on this lady's whole husband. Egregious lies. You brought on people onto the show to try to lend some sort of credibility to your lies. And you cool. And you telling me I don't ever need to talk to Candace ever again. You started it. Same thing with Wendy. You started it. And the crazy part is you're starting it. All of the people that are involved don't have love in their life. They don't. Mia doesn't. Ashley doesn't. Giselle doesn't. Well, except for Karen. But Karen, I don't think, was plotting with them to do that. And uh, Robin doesn't. None of them. Nobody. And so it's all the audacities. So we over here miserable because we ain't got a man that loves us. Let's tear her down. And pretend like, and let's gaslight everybody. It's crazy. So, <sighs> Candace is leaving, which I wish. Oh, excuse me. She's leaving, and I think it's good for her. She shouldn't leave. But I wish she wasn't, though, you know. Apparently, Robin's leaving, too. What I heard. Do the great by child what is this world coming to 
But I'll just make this one last thing. Based on, like I said, the, the live I was in and online, you have all these people that hate Candace. I'm glad, so happy she gone. So happy she got beat up. So happy that she leaving, right? Yet, they continuously have a conversation about this lady that they say, oh, I can't wait till she leaves. I'm glad she's gone. Why are you still talking about her? I don't talk about people unless they're interesting or they have something that I want to understand. These people don't want to understand it. <laughs> they want to, they just want to slay her. That's all. And so since it's like, we, they can't, Candace couldn't have possibly quit. It had to be. Bravo hated her. The fans hated her. And so she got kicked off. Why would they hate her? What would be their justification for hating her? What's your justification? She don't even know you. And this is the gaslighting I'm talking about. Ashley... Giselle, at least both of them, brought people onto this TV so that they could try to lend some sort of credibility to whatever news or blog said that Candace's husband was having a side baby and all this, right? They plot and they plan about all of that. But the thing is, who do you have in your corner? Who? Nobody. Candace is about to make movies and she got a, a career that's blossoming. She's famous. She got, you know, parents who are both doctors. She's winning. But because these people hate her so much, it could be she's just leaving because she's sick of this job or she needs some mental, you know, break from this malarkey that's continuously going on involving her and her family. So they have to make it that Bravo hated her. And the fans hated her. And we're so happy she's gone. Why continuously talk about someone you hate? She's not going to be in your life no more. Why are you here? <laughs> she's off the TV screen. But you're still talking, to, talking about her. You're still berating her. And for what? You don't even know the lady. Say something about you. And then you have a NECA. But I think NECA and um, Candace are cool. I do think that. I think. Candace, I'm going to ask one more time. Please come on my show. <laughs> please, please, please. I'm going to be so great. I'm trustworthy. Y'all help me get Candace to come on my show so I can... Well, one, I just want to talk to her because I feel like she and I would get along in like real life. Plus, she's a lead. No, I'm a Leo and she's a Sag. And all my real friends are Sag. We just get along. We have a good time. My theory is this. And I'm not a, you know, conspiracy theorist. But it comes across to me, especially with Ashley and Giselle. And probably even Mia. It comes across because they were all involved in the takedown of Candace. Um, oh, God, I just lost my train of thought. Hold, please. One second. Oh. I just feel like they've been mal maligning Candace since day one. The moment she said, you know, my mom and I purchased a condo together, whatever it is. They sat on that season, and really for seasons, and talked about how Candace doesn't have her own stuff and her mom's paying for X, Y, and Z. And I'm just trying to understand. I ain't hear none of y'all talk about how, um, you know, Paris Hilton's grandfather left them all like $30 million each. Nobody, nobody's calling that out and saying, oh, Paris, you're 44 years old and... Your mom is still taking care of you. We don't even question it. Why y'all quit? We don't question even the other women on the other shows, the ones that are, the cast is all white or whatever. Nobody sits over there. If someone 
you know, mom and dad are doctors and are and they're able to provide whoever extra. We're not questioning that. We're not questioning. Oh well, um, you know, uh, let me see. Kyle Richards is paying for you know some big extravagant wedding for her daughter. We ain't worry about that. We expect that. No one, no one questions it. No one's not. No, I can guarantee you, no one is sitting around asking Kyle. Kyle, did you get some money from your mom to pay for your wedding or your Givenchy or whatever it is? Did you? Why is it okay for them to, you know, never be questioned about their wealth? Why aren't, why aren't we celebrating the fact that we have real life people on TV that literally the parents gave over $150,000 so that their daughter could have her dream wedding? But then I heard people online, that's not generational wealth. Michael has generational wealth. Well, and again, here we go. Please, some people are just not smarter than fifth graders, and I cannot. It is just it bog it boggles my mind. And it's just because you want to find a problem with with with, with Candace. So we got to point out that you know, you know, Michael he has millions of dollars. That's generational wealth. Okay. No, that's false. Yeah, he's rich, or allegedly he's rich. Yeah, no one's doubting that, or no one's really questioning it. Not really. But let's put on our thinking caps, okay? Let's use some common sense. It can't be generational wealth if only one person has the wealth. And let's be clear. So Ashley's children, because this person also said, uh, you know, Ashley's children, they'll, they'll be involved in, you know, uh, generational wealth. Because, you know, Michael has this many millions of dollars. Candace and then, you know, her, her mom and her dad, they don't have millions of dollars. So it can't be generational wealth. How do you know that? And at least it's the wealth has gone from the parent to Candace and probably her siblings. What's wrong with that? I just want people to open up their mind. Why do you want, why are we downplaying and not celebrating this black couple, these black parents that raise their child right and have, now their child is making millions of dollars, living out her dream because she had good supportive parents to allow her to do it. And she didn't have people around her trying to diminish her because her mom is helping her out. It's ignorant to say to someone that they shouldn't be able to use whatever extra money that their family has for them. Why? Why? Because I would love to know Giselle, Robin, and all the rest of them that have a problem with it. You're going to stop giving helping your child out? Even though you got millions of dollars. And let's be clear. Didn't PK say on Beverly Hills? Because this is the other thing that bothered me. So, because Michael has money now, you are assuming his children would also have that money. Which is not necessarily true. For example, Tori Spelling, daughter of Aaron Spelling, who made 90210 and, you know, Merrill's Place and all these, you know, I think there's... 80s and 90s hit shot, whatever. Anyways, my point is, um, Aaron Spelling, when he passed, his, his, uh, I'll just say his income or his wealth was something north, like $300 million. That's a lot of money. I would argue. Tory Spelling, if we're just looking at it from the, you know, we're not doing any type of, let me just, you know, try to use my brain. <laughs> you know, people are like, so that's generational wealth? It should be. But that's Tori, if, she get, if she's getting any big, large part of that $300 million, which is probably double that now, I don't know. She not. That's why she didn't do a 500 different um, reality shows. 
trying to make trying to make fetch happen. Right? I think like I was saying with PK, he swears he had he built a company that was over worth over fifty billion dollars. Do we think their kids are gonna have generational wealth? But if you go based on what the money he, he had or he said he had, yeah, it's easy to say, yeah, Michael has all this money. Because, you know, um, this guy over here had all this money. That he doesn't have anymore. So how can he pass it down? But you're minimizing the black lady. Because her mom is able to take care of her. Which, let me be clear. I just don't think any of these ladies on this show that have children. Especially the ones saying can't try to minimize her. Are not going to take care of their kids. If they need it. Financially. Holly, if you hear me. It's the foolery for me. It plays too much. So... I just want Candace to go away and, and and plan her comeback. Not come back to reality. Not to come back to um, Bravo. I want Candace to genuinely be able to walk away and stun on bitches. I mean, she's already stunned on bitches, Candace. is already very effective at that. <laughs> but I want her to, I, you know, it's like I want I want her to win even 10 times more now because that lady, the people on the Twitter, incessant bullying. I wonder why um, I've never heard anyone call. Uh, what's her name? Robin. Aggressive. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. And she's had more aggressive outbreaks than anybody else on the show. I don't see them on there and talking about Robin's so aggressive. Again, people want to see what they want to see. And they hate Candace. And so, therefore, they got to hate everything she's doing. It's crazy to me. I like to lift people up. Even when I don't like them. I can still be a decent human being. I don't have to like you. I can still send you a baby gift. Because it ain't about you, it's about your child. Anyway. Chime down in the comments, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation with Candace leaving and then apparently Robin's leaving too. I don't know. I find it hard to believe Robin's leaving. I think what's going to happen is she's going to get demoted. That's what I think. Well, I don't know. Because from that preview, they may seem like Juan didn't come to the the um what is it called the reunion and then Andy being shady <laughs> talking about he didn't have practice he didn't have to do it's like Andy you so shady <laughs> but like I said chime down in the comments guys let me know what you think about this and let me know any videos that you guys would be interested in me you know sharing my viewpoint and my thoughts about um on Chanel's reality but again guys thank you so much for tuning in if you've watched my video from all the way from the beginning to the end like I said please 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 hit the like button subscribe button notification button because I want to have a, I want I would love to have a panel discussing colorism and I would love to have all kinds of different people 
not to bash anybody, not to prove a point, but to just have an opportunity to listen to the people like me, excuse me, who do see, I do see the coloristic behaviors. And what I mean by that is, example, if you guys been watching, I think it was, I think it was the second season that Monique was on. I can't remember exactly, but they were coming out of some restaurant or whatever. And, uh, Robin got in her face and, you know, Monique was holding that umbrella and she was just kind of like, um, you better back up before I choke you out with this umbrella. She's like, oh no, I can't do that. Cause then you can sue me and have all your dreams come true. <laughs> Classic. But we're going to take that and we're going to, and I'm going to ask you guys, please chime down in the comments what you think of this. What do you think would happen? So let's remove Robin from the incident and replace her with Giselle. And replace Monique with Wendy. But. Wendy's having that the type of behavior that Robin had, which is rude, getting in the face, talking to you, whatever, whatever, whatever. Tell me what you guys think the outcome would be on Bravo, online, and then what's your personal opinion? I would love to know. So anyway, anyway guys, just like I said, share, share with me your comments, um, what you think is best. Some of the things you noticed that maybe I didn't pick up on. Um, I would love to know your thoughts. So, again, like I said, get out in the shatterization. Shout out to, is it DJ Sky Richie or Sky DJ? I don't know. I love him, though. And Make It Make Sense and Kempire and um, at the Brooke Ashley. Listen, that's my soul sister. She don't know it, though. <laughs> I feel like in real life, we would be friends. Same way with Candace. I do. I feel like it, like. We, in real life, we'd be friends. So, Candace, I'm asking one more time, sis. Can you come on Chanel's reality? Please. Thanks. You guys have a good evening. Happy Easter. I will see you guys next time. Bye.